Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie Rosier. And this is Daisy the Beagle. During lockdown, Daisy was watching me do quite a lot of my lectures and my seminars online, and Daisy was busy learning about medieval history. Now lockdown's eased slightly, we thought it'd be a good idea to explore some of the medieval parts of East Anglia where we live. So today, we're in a village called Lavenham. Lavenham is famous for its pubs, its small shops, but most of all, its medieval buildings and its late medieval history. So Daisy and I are going to go for a walk around the village. We're going to show you some interesting sites and tell you all about them. You ready, Daisy? Okay, let's go. There's been a town at Lavenham since the time of the Doomsday Book in the 1080s when the manor was owned by Aubrey de Vere. The town really grew in the later Middle Ages with the growth of the wool trade after the Black Death and in particular, Lavenham produced a type of broadcloth called blue broadcloth, which is quite difficult to say. By the 15th century, Lavenham paid more tax than York and more tax than Lincoln, reflecting the growth and prosperity of the town. Daisy's adjusting herself nicely there. But by the end of the Middle Ages, wool trade competition from continental producers meant that Lavenham lost much of its prominence in the market, but that's good for us because it meant that local residents no longer had the capital in order to invest in expanding and building over the older medieval buildings, and that means that we get these lovely timber-framed environment that survives to this day. Should we go and explore some more? So here we are in front of the Guild Hall, which was built by the Guild of Corpus Christi. In a medieval town, guilds were established in order to regulate the standards for production, to control things like prices and working hours and so on. Essentially, a guild could help run an industry in, in, for, in a town, and if you belonged to the guild, then you were in the right place, if you belonged to a particular craft or merchant class. The Guild Hall in Lavenham was built in the 16th century, and it's famous for its two-storied porch, carved columns, and jettied upper level. Most of the buildings in Lavenham dating from this period had that jettied style. Now it's owned by the National Trust, it has a really good shop and cafe and you can visit for a small fee. One of the best known Lavenham families of the later Middle Ages is the Sprigg family. By the 15th century, the family owned 20 manors throughout East Anglia. That's a demonstration of their wealth. Thomas Spring, who died in the early 16th century in the 1520s, plays a major role in the rebuilding of the church that you can see behind me. They marry into noble families, most importantly the De Vere family, who are one of the most prominent ancient noble families in the region and owners of the manor in the town at the time of the Doomsday Book. This building is known as De Vere House on Water Street in Lavenham. It was founded by the De Vere family and is unique for its exposed brickwork. In recent years it's found fame as the fictitious birthplace of Harry Potter. So we're standing outside the church of St Peter and Paul, a large late medieval rebuilding of previous churches. There's been a church here since before the Norman Conquest, but most of what you can see is late medieval. The chancel was rebuilt in the 14th century, dating to the 1340s. And in the lifetime of Thomas Spring, who died in 1523, most of the church was rebuilt in a much grander style, with also patronage from John the 13th Earl of Oxford, who was from the local De Vere family. There was somewhat of a competition between these two families. The Spring family crest can be seen 30 times on the outside of the church, and the De Vere star can be seen on the top of the tower. If you look closely behind me, you might be able to see it. I'll show you a picture of that later on. What do you think, Daisy? Pretty good, eh? <laughs> okay, we'll go inside. Okay, so here we are outside the porch of the church. I'm filming this on the 1st of April, 2021 are allowed into the church. Unfortunately, dogs aren't, are they Daisy? So Daisy's very disappointed. I'm going to have to leave her outside, not on her own. Don't worry, she'll
shall be accompanied while I go in and explore some of the parts of the church. When I went inside the church, I was the only visitor. There were a group of PCC members and clergy planning the Easter services which were about to happen the weekend after I visited. Services are largely being held online at the moment and you can check the situation if you follow the website which I've attached to this video. I'm sure things will change by the time some of you see this video. Here's a view looking up the nave towards the east showing the size and the decoration levels of the church after it was rebuilt in the later Middle Ages. The Spring family are memorialised throughout the church, not only on the outside, but also the inside. Here's a brass that Thomas Spring mounted to his father Thomas, who died in 1486, and his mother Margaret, showing people praying for the souls of the dead family members. There's a par close screen, which is a way to divide up a church into separate small chapels or memorial areas for certain families and here's one for the aforementioned Spring family and it houses the tomb of Thomas Spring and there's also a par close screen for the Earls of Oxford and the De Vere family so a bit of rivalry inside as well as outside the church. Okay so here we are in front of a building known as Laban and Priory founded by the De Vere family in the 13th century and staffed by Benedictine monks until the 15th century when it was bought by a private owner. Now it's a luxury guest house if you can afford to stay there. Lavenham Priory is interesting because it's an example of a monastic house in just a fairly normal looking house in the middle of a town. Here's a view looking down Water Street, which has plenty of medieval buildings to look at. Underneath some of the houses on Water Street is a brick-lined tunnel made in the 15th or the 16th century with original bricks. In his 2019 series, Pubs, Ponds and Power, Ben Robinson for the BBC was able to walk all the way down this tunnel and out into somebody's garden. I put a link to the BBC iPlayer website for this program underneath the video on the YouTube site. In the 16th century, Lavenham witnessed a popular rebellion. In 1525, Lord Chancellor Thomas Wolsey, who was born in Ipswich, not far away from here in Suffolk, levied a tax called the Amicable Grant, which was intended to fund Henry VIII's future campaign against the French. The tax is resisted across the country, but in East Anglia, a rebellion is launched. 10,000 people march on Lavenham, but Sir John Spring, who's from that famous Lavenham family, organises a resistance against it by removing the clappers from the bells of the church that's just opposite me here, and that meant that the rebellion couldn't be officially launched. The Duke of Norfolk and the Duke of Suffolk quelled the rebellion, but the leaders were later pardoned and I think that's a testament to the fact that nobody really wanted to pay that tax in the first place and Wolsey's policy ultimately failed. We hope you enjoyed watching our history walk around Lavenham. If you did, press the like button below and leave a comment and maybe tell us where you'd like to see us go next. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram and look out for more videos from us soon.